Hey guys, welcome back to your mental training class. I'm your peak performance coach, Colin Henderson. And in this lesson, we're gonna talk about one of the most powerful forces we have as performers, and that is your self-image. Guys, watch this. Your limits begin where your vision ends. The most powerful force you have is how you see yourself right now. Do you see yourself as a victim, a victor, a winner, a whiner, a champ, a chump, a hero, a zero, a warrior, or a warrior? Here are two stories to show you the power of self-image. The first one is about a circus elephant named Andy. As a baby elephant, the ringmaster would tie his leg onto the ground and put a stake into the ground, and he would try to break free. And he would try to break free, but he couldn't. He wasn't strong enough. And he kept trying and kept trying, but as he got older, his will and his fight to break free got weaker and weaker. So as a grown elephant, after he did his tricks in the circus, throwing a football with his trunk, uh, balancing on one leg, sitting on a chair, when he was done, he'd go to the corner of the tent and a rope went around his leg and he didn't even try to break free because he was conditioned to believe his self-image, that internal story is, I don't have enough strength to break free. Question for you, how is your internal story? What limiting beliefs have you set on yourself because of a past mistake or because what someone has told you? Break those chains now. Now, this other story is about a high school student named Eric. Eric was not a good student. His teacher labeled him as he's not smart, he's not intelligent, he's not a good student. But the SATs were coming up. And his mom said, hey, Eric, take these SATs. He said, mom, I'm not going to college, I'm not intelligent. You know, he was getting in trouble in school, he was getting expelled, getting in fights, was not going to class. His mom said, no, we can change it. Go get your SATs, study, you can get into college, go for it. So Eric listened to his mom. So he showed up to take the test. And his, the first question, it was so hard, he was trying to cheat, but everyone's questions were different. He had to answer every test on his own. He turned in that test. And two months later, they got the results back from that test. And his mom said, open up the test, got the envelope, open up the test, and said, Eric, come in here. Tell me right now, did you cheat on that test? And Eric said, Mama, I tried to cheat, but every test was different. She said, you got a 1,500 out of 1,600 on that test. You're smart. You can make something of your life. You have to apply yourself. So that story and that test score, he changed his self-image. He said, I am smart. So he stopped skipping school. He started to turn in his homework. He stopped hanging out with the wrong people. He started to try harder. And guys, a year and a half, he graduated. The next year, he enrolled into a JC, graduated in two years, then went to a four-year college. He was able to graduate with honors. He got hired as an intern at a tech company, and in seven years, he was the CEO. Five years after that, so 12 years after he graduated high school, he went back home, and his mom had an envelope from the SAT board. And they opened it together, and it said, Dear Eric, we apologize, but we did an audit of all of our tests. We found 12 mistakes and you got a 710 on your SAT. Wow, a 710. His mom said, so what? Because your self-image changed, your actions changed. Positive self-image, positive action, that's a cycle. And he's like, that's true. So guys, how's your self-image? How are your actions? A way I like to teach this is I like to draw a triangle, which also means delta, what I want you to do is I want you to create yourself. I don't want you to find yourself. So I want you to think about what are three words that you can write how you want to show up, how you want to be. Now, my three words, the first one that I want to show up as, as being authentic, being authentically myself. My other word that I focus on is being present. I want to be present in the moment at all times. And lastly, my other word that I want to show up as is to have courage. I want to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So an exercise for you today is take ownership of your self-image. Create yourself. 
What are three words that you can evaluate your performance on outcomes, on wins and losses, but did I show up a certain way? So I assess my performance. Was I authentically myself? Was I present in the moment and did I have courage? Now the last thing I want to teach you guys of the power of self-image is your me wheel. Your me wheel. So as performers, oftentimes we get all of our self-validation and our self-worth as an athlete. As an athlete. So imagine a wheel. If all your validation and your self-worth is tied to this one thing, that is so unhealthy. Another exercise for your self-image is what else do you have in your life that make you as a complete person? For me, it's my faith. For me, I'm a husband. I'm a father. I love music. I can keep going. So a way to help lower anxiety, a way, a way to lower stress, your performance as an athlete is not a matter of life and death. If you have success or fail, it doesn't define you. It's not what you do, it's who you are that counts. So can you write down what makes up a complete me wheel for your life? Guys, you're amazing, you're awesome, you're special. See yourself as a champion and you will act like a champion, just like Eric. Break the chains, don't be like Andy. Have a clear image on how you wanna show up and have more balance in your life with a solid knee wheel.